Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 10 years anniversary session for HPC Systems. Today, we have a couple of great guests in this uh, <laughs> session. We have James, who you probably know because he's been around for some time, and also Rodrigo, who's been around for even more time. Uh, they've been uh, involved in a number of projects, and uh, they uh, have their uh, little fingers in a number of uh, code bases. And, uh, and you, they will tell us a little bit more on, on what they've been doing over this time. Of course, uh, this is part of our 10 years anniversary session for, for these webinars. And uh, we will cover a little bit of the uh, going down memory lane and also some of the things that they are doing today and they will be doing tomorrow. So with that, welcome guys. Thank you very much for joining us on this session, Rodrigo and, uh, and James. I, um, I want to start getting some of the um, um, perhaps all time information, Rodrigo. Uh, so you've been with uh, HP Systems for some time, right? Right? How many yeah. years have you been with this? Oh, well, I joined the team shortly after we went open source. So that puts me somewhere close to 10 years. Wow. So, so, so Rodrigo, how, how do you see change over these 10 years? So, uh, do you think we evolved, hopefully for the better? Yeah, yeah, we definitely have evolved. We've uh, we've learned a lot, I think, uh, along the way. Uh, we were pioneers, uh, at least within the company, in this uh, endeavor. Um, yeah, we've definitely changed quite a bit in uh, uh, exposing our, our our technology out to the world. It was uh, it was definitely a learning experience and. Um, Reaching out to communities to 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 join our community it, it has uh, changed the way we work, the way we um, we market ourselves in in many ways. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. So, uh, and I know James that you joined a little bit more recently, even though recent is a relative word there. So you've been around yeah. for quite a few years too, right? Yeah, four or five years. Uh, I guess it's kind of hard to keep track, but but yeah, a while. So how do you see the change? Uh, I remember that you joined in a number of uh, perhaps self-contained projects, but then your scope expanded quite a bit. Yeah, I, I think there's been a lot of change, you know, since even, you know, the four or five years that I've been on the project. Uh, since then, we've done a lot to kind of open up the project, connect it to other projects, things like Spark and uh, HDFS, Hadoop, that, that sort of thing that Rodrigo was kind of mentioning earlier. Um, so I think those kind of uh, changes have been pretty Pretty beneficial to the project, uh, opening up to more community. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. So um, I think uh, you can never do enough on in integrating with other open source projects, uh, and uh, and and certainly we have done quite a bit in that area. And, and I know you said Rodrigo. Rodrigo has been involved with a number of these things for the longest time, uh, including JDBC. Remember Rodrigo? Yeah. Oh yeah, great. absolutely. <laughs> So, so tell me a little bit about those integration projects. Uh, what you've been working on for the past five, ten years? Wow. Yeah. So um, early on, we we realized that we wanted to be able to integrate with other projects, with other great uh, and popular open source projects. So we we picked a few technologies that we thought uh, would give us more bang for the buck. Uh, as as James mentioned, uh, we immediately. Um, clung on to uh, Hadoop and HDFS, and we had a connector that would, uh, an early version of a connector that would tie in the data between the two platforms. Later on, we uh, we realized that a uh, Java-based uh, DBMS uh, connector, the JDBC, was a uh, one of the things that would open up the most doors, right? It, um, it was a lot of fun to, to create that project, and it, uh, created a lot of opportunities with a lot of Power BI tools and with a lot of stand, uh, standalone Java applications to be able to tap into our um, into our data sets. Uh, it, it also uh, ex uh, it, it helped us create a new uh, uh, SQL interface that we call WS SQL, which we ended up uh, creating to service the uh, JDBC and whatever other versions of um, uh, uh, 
SQL connectors we were going to create in the future. And it was great because it forced us to, to create a view, a DBMS type of view, a, a SQL type of view of the platform, which we don't always tie one to one with the uh, with that world, but it, it kind of forced that and it made us think about a, a lot of the things that we do. So it was um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> it, it's still go it's still ongoing and it's uh, I think well, it has created a lot of opportunities. That is one of see uh, yeah. these are all of those little projects that start with a small thing and then they just expand and uh, and go far beyond the original reach. The intention was to create okay let's create this JDBC driver, right. but then it just becomes a full blown SQL interface to HBCC. Right. <laughs> <That's>, right. Uh, <laughs> yep. So, uh, and James, you had the same type of experience right on your side when you started with your, your own implementations of uh, integration pieces, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, those kind of implementations are always fascinating. They're, they're interesting to work on because, you know, we're in a, in a big data space. So if we're talking about, you know, a, a SQL uh, querying engine inside of HPCC, that, that's kind of a complex problem. You know, you have billions of records and these data sets are gigantic. And so how do you design this stuff so it's like robust and it can actually you know, move records efficiently. So, you know, when we're doing this kind of stuff, we're looking at, okay, if I'm parsing this field, how long is this going to take? And we're like, you know, we're worried about like, okay, you know, how many, you know, integer operations are we doing or something on this on this one field? Um, so it's, it's a really interesting space. And uh, yeah, I would agree with Rodrigo. It's been really fun to kind of work on those integrations between, you know, things like SQL and Spark and uh, the external, you know, community has been great. Um, it's, it's really great to see people picking up the projects that we've been using and actually work with them. I and mean, it's always like, you know, kind of a fulfilling thing. So uh, we kind of enjoyed doing that, I think. Yeah, the other day I was uh, having a conversation with Gordon about something completely different. Um, and he mentioned that he just realized that uh, I think um, the Unreal Engine, uh, Epic Games Unreal Engine, just picked up a, and is using part of his visualization framework in some place where they do reporting on Unreal Engine. So it is, these are Absolutely. things that are quite far-fetched. So you it's, you started with the big data platform, and then suddenly one of the components that is used there starts to be picked up in some other project somewhere else. It's, just, uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes you don't think really cool. that you can have any impact uh, outside of your uh, little re domain, and suddenly it just goes right. out, right? <laughs> but but you, uh, James, have been also involved with the Spark integration. I think you, um, if I remember correctly, you were involved in some of these uh, integration projects as well. So tell me a little bit about that. Uh, so you came to HP Systems uh, fairly new at the time, and you, uh, I don't think you had much experience in Spark either, right? Uh, so you learned both at the same time. How did it go? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of a, an interesting uh starting point i think that was my my initial starting point really with the team i've been with the company for probably a, I don't know, a year and a half two years and then uh, i joined the hpcc team and that was kind of the first project i worked on so uh yeah learning spark and really the core of the platform at the same time that was fascinating uh it, it provided an interesting perspective as to you know how the, how the different tools are, are different and how the different platforms are different and some, you know use cases between the two and i think that like, the interesting thing that we get out of that is uh, because we have this integration between Spark and HPCC, we get the strengths of both. So if there's new technology that you know the open source community with Spark is putting into Spark, we can use that with HPCC. I think that's a, a really big benefit. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely really interesting learning Spark and HPCC at, at the same time. I bet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I bet it was. So, uh, so guys, uh, Rodrigo, uh, what are you working on today? What do you think, uh, well, first of all, what you're doing now, and uh, then uh, what do you think is coming down the pipe in the future? Yeah, so one of our focal points right now is uh, our trek the our trek to the cloud. So the uh, the platform uh, is uh, making a, a big effort to, to truly move to the cloud, not just do a lift and shift. Uh, so that's what we're focusing on, focusing on right now. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to to tackle, one of the problems that I want to tackle is the logging uh, problem that uh, that you suffer in the uh, in the cloud world, where your logs are not persistent. They can be distributed. It's hard to find them. It's 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 an issue. So um, we've been working on integrating with uh, with the very popular uh, Elastic Stack. So one of the oh, things. Oh, good that point. We, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's a very mature and very uh, popular uh, platform. So what we wanted to do is uh, 
allow our users to to utilize that very popular open source project. So we're creating a um, a very easy to use uh, Helm chart that allows you to deploy a mm -hmm. an Elastic Search. Um, uh, I'll call it a cluster alongside our platform, and we're we're producing a lot of uh, documentation and examples on how one would use it and process their logs and possibly visualize their logs so that they can actually get some good information out of that big, uh, uh, you know, sea of information in the logs. Very good. That's that's a good. That's a very good initiative, and you have a good point there. Uh, logs in a distributed environment are, are hard enough. But in a cloud distributed environment where things tend to be more ephemeral than, than in the right. normal data center, it's even more challenging. So having exactly. a way to aggregate those and search those logs when you need them, that is quite useful. Yes, I agree. I agree. And 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 James, and what you how have you been working on? What have you oh, been doing I, over the last <laughs> uh, year or so? And what do you see coming down the road? Well, I you know, I've been doing as well as I could, I think, you know, given circumstances. Uh, I think we all have. But uh <laughs> Yeah, I've most of them working on data integrations. Uh, so there's some really interesting things going on in the cloud. Um, you know, how you store data in the cloud is kind of a, a challenge as well. You know, it kind of goes back to Rodrigo's you know point about logs. If everything's ephemeral, how do you store things? How is that efficient? Um, so I've been working on things kind of tangential to that kind of question. Uh, integrations between uh, different things in the cloud, as an example. You know, when we go into the cloud, there are Spark services that are uh, available from the platform. Um, and that's, that's really nice. You don't have to manage it yourself. And so how do we integrate with that? Uh, also, how do we store data potentially in a way that uh, HPCC can access it and Spark can access it? And so we've been looking into a couple of things along that line. And again, how do we move data into the into the cloud in the first place? And that's kind of a, a difficult thing, especially when you're talking about terabytes of data. And so Rodrigo and I have been working on a couple of things to potentially help in that area. And uh, we've been working on uh, some Java projects that allow you to move data quickly in and out of HPCC and a uh, you know, multi-threaded, multi-process kind of environment. So, uh, yeah, mostly data movement, which is surprisingly complex and really important in big data. I guess, I guess it's in the name, but yes, yeah. yes, it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> so moving the data, how? I, are you mean that you're taking the data and serializing it in some format to move it out, or, or how do you? Yeah. Yeah, essentially. So we've been working on libraries that uh, connect HPCC and open up uh, multiple connections. So you know. 400 connections to a, a 400 way store, as an example, and we can pull out uh, all the data out and send it somewhere. Um, at the moment, it's a generic library. So, you know, we're, this is actually what we're, we've now started using this to integrate with Spark. So, originally, we had a Spark connector that was its own code base. That I lose you guys. Oh, briefly. We now you're back. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you said that okay. initially it's a, uh, you were working on some a Spark code base, and that's where we lost. You. Right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so the Spark code base was originally its own thing, but now we're kind of consuming this uh, Java project called DFS Client, and that allows any Java project to be able to move data efficiently in and out of HPCC. We handle all the complex uh, streaming operations and serialization and deserialization. And we can kind of move that into different formats. So as an example, one thing that we just added was the ability to move data in and out of a Parquet format through the DFS client library. Um, and so that, that will potentially have some uh, you know, uses, use cases when we move to the cloud. We could potentially move data in HPCC into the Parquet format as we're moving it if, if we found that to be interesting. So that's very interesting because I know that Parquet has a different data shape in general. So do you need to reshape the data as you do that? Or how does that work? Yeah. It, it, yeah, we, we do have to do that, and we're, we're using some open source libraries to help us do that, which is which is great. You know, the code that we don't have to write and maintain is, is you know, good for yeah. us. Um, so yeah, but we do have to kind of shape that data. Uh, so Parquet is in a column-based format, and uh, HPCC data is in a row-based format. And so as we're pulling it in, we have to do the conversion, um, but we handle all of that for you, and it and it just works. So that is very good. Parquet plus client. Yeah, and and good point uh, about the. Well, anything that is out there already available is available, so you just use it. You don't need to build it yourself. So uh, now that brings another interesting question. And Rodrigo, I meant to ask you as well. So um, when you look at the Elasticsearch for logs, uh, you can use also some past offerings for Elasticsearch, right? But I do know that there was some little issue between the Elastic Fox and Amazon. So they are certainly in a contest with licensing. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how they will develop. So maybe past might not be an offer anymore. I don't know. Based on the licensing change from Elastic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. We'll see. 
Yeah. What comes on the road. We still we can still deploy Elastic uh, as a as an open source project. That's not a problem. If we have our own home chart, it should be fine either way, right? Yeah. So originally we did um, end up integrating uh, Elastic into our Helm. So it all almost uh, felt like a uh, subcomponent of the of the platform. Of course, it was still completely external and it yeah. held it, its own license. And I believe it's we still would have been able to do it um, yeah, offer it to the, yeah. to the community at large. But I think. The the question in the uh, licensing uh, shied us away a little bit from it. So to take the safe route, we ended up uh, doing the, um, the the next best thing, which is offering the uh, a, a independent chart that allows the user to to do this. It, it takes one extra click from the user, and yeah. it's, it's, it's the functionality is still yeah. the same. Yeah, I think it's perfectly fine either way. I think it's just the elastic. Um, Trying to uh, get back at Amazon for uh, right. selling Elastic <laughs> and right. you know, making money. Yeah, I think it's good. <laughs> right. Okay, so this is good. The the future is quite bright on both sides. Uh, um, I think so. Yeah, you you uh, you're absolutely right. The cloud is a high priority everywhere. People are moving to the cloud, and big data platforms in the cloud are are quite in need uh, nowadays. Um, and it does bring new challenges. So um, there are a few things that perhaps we can fill out with integrations, like uh, you've been finding some components that can help us um, integrate with others, other systems, uh, and others we might need to code ourselves, so we might need to build some glue around this as well. This, yeah. is, this is very cool. Yeah. Okay, great guys, so thank you very much. Let's close it here. Um, we already been going on for quite a bit, and I don't want to have listeners that get bored uh, <laughs> to death with this talk. Uh, I think this is great. Thank you very much for doing this. Uh, plenty of interesting things going on, and uh, certainly this is a great milestone for HP Systems as well. 10-year anniversary of all the open source projects. So, folks, yeah. thank you very much, and, uh, and have a great day. Thank, thank you, Flavio. Thank you. thank you for having us. Thank you.